I think it was lab seven where you had to make two versions of the web page. And uh, fairly evenly split among the class, um, got full credit and got maybe a little bit knocked off uh, because I didn't think their uh, two versions were quite different enough. So what I wanted to do today is start off and show you what I consider, because I probably said on a lot of people's uh, comments, I said something to the effect of, you should, you should make the layouts more different. All right. In other words, yeah, it, it's good that you can go in and change the colors and change the fonts and change some other things. But really, one of the points of this is, is to go and to make these as much different as possible. And, and therefore, a good um, thing to have is to um, be able to change the layout uh, as well. Um, so we're going to look at that. Again, a lot of people did a good job on this. This is just one I happen to pick out uh, of, the, of the good ones. All right, here's the first version of the page. Here is the second version of the page. So notice how the layout is different. In this case, oops, the navigation is here, the stickers are here. In this case, the navigation is here and the stickers are down below. Now again, um, you, you know, you can go hog wild uh, with this. Uh, the point is, is we want to make this more like CSS Zen Garden where the layouts aren't just like a slightly different version of the other one, but we really want a big version. So a big difference, by the way. So um, do go, if you haven't, if you didn't get full credit, adjust one of them so that it has a much different layout. And by layout, I mean the positioning or the relative positioning of the elements. All right. So in other words, if even though these pages are different, if this stuff was down here like it was on this page, I wouldn't consider that enough of a difference. I really want a big difference in layout. So take a look at what you got and the grade that you got. And if you got points deducted for that, then just go in and, and make one of the layouts um, a lot more different. All right. On to tables. Uh, again, your, your, your project design is coming due soon, so that should be on your mind. Bring your materials to work, you know, on a thumb drive or whatever, or to, to school rather. Uh, well, it's my job, right? <laughs> Bring your materials to, uh, to class, uh, you know, all the time now, you know, whether you email them to yourself or use Dropbox or you put it on a thumb drive, whatever, because again, we're, we're likely to have some time to take a look at this. And it is important to get feedback, both from me and from other folks in the class. All right, um, on to tables. We started looking at tables last time, if memory serves, and I think we went through the basic table tags, but we didn't really do anything fancy. So what we want to do is, is sort of review that um, discussion and then go back and start having more fun with these, with these tables. All right, here's where we left off last time and we talked about tables as being used to represent a table of data. That is, we are not going to use a table simply to get things laid out the way that you want them to. Um, that's sort of, you know, 1999 style web development, all right? That's 13 years past, right? And CSS has evolved so much from then, and you have so much more flexibility when you design using and, 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 and format the layout using CSS. But we still use tables because we might want to show a table of data, a, a structure where there's rows and columns. So let's go maybe add a couple more rows to this table, um, and then we can look at the tags involved. So let's go in and add a row for Cleveland and a row for Los Angeles, let's say, just so that we have a few rows here in the table. Mm -hmm. 
Not this year, but. I have proposed on numerous occasions that we have snow days where um, the weather's too bad to come to school. I, I've suggested that we have warm Sundays too. Not Sunday, but sun up in the sky day. Yeah, sunny days. Whereas if the weather's too good, uh, class is canceled. Um, I have a feeling some of my students looking around, of course it is filling up now, but I was going to say, I have a feeling some of my students maybe took that joke as serious and thought we really had those and looked down and said, well, it's very sunny today, I guess we don't have class. All right. But again, that was my suggestion. Uh, I'm also regretting the fact that our spring break was a couple weeks back. It really would have been nice now, especially given that my kids have spring break, one this week and one coming up next week. Or one next week and one the week after, I mean. So, all right, all right, back to work. So I added, uh, I added three rows in here. Again, we started out looking at, at just four tags for the table. And there will be a few more tags, but these are sort of the basic tags. There's a table tag that goes around the entire table. All right. A table really consists of a bunch of rows. So we have TR tags. And the TRs um, start and end for the next row. TRs contain either THs or TDs. And THs are meant to be table header data, TD, or table header uh, information. Uh, TDs are meant to be table data. So the question was asked last time, can a row can like the first column of a row be considered a header too? And I would say, yeah, it can be. Like in this case, you know, the data is the average temperatures and really the first column in that row, the city, you could think of as being like a header. All right, it's identifying what those, those data cells mean. If you said, if you put this in a TD as well, I wouldn't argue with you either. You could say, well, that's data, that's the name of the city, but um, six of one half dozen the other. Now, let's look at our expanded table. And we'll notice a couple things. First of all, the THs are centered within the cells of the table. Now you might not think that's the case because you might see January and say, well, that's not centered. Well, it actually is. It's just a very narrow column. So it, it's centered within the column. How does, how does the browser know how big to make the columns? For example, I didn't say how big to make the columns, and it, therefore it desi decided on its own how, how big to make the columns. How does a browser decide that? Yeah, the, the, the biggest content. In other words, um, the city column is that wide because Los Angeles is the widest city, and that's how wide Los Angeles is. If I were to go and change this and, and spell out the month, then magically January will expand to, um, to match that, to match the, the width of, of January. That column will expand. Uh, again, this is getting back to uh, a statement I, I've made over and over again, that the way something looks is really a combination of two things, the, the defaults of the browser and any CSS code. So if you don't put any CSS code on here, all right, um, the browser will um, figure out how to do it. And in the case of tables, it makes the columns wide enough to fit the biggest piece of data. All right. Any questions on this? Yes? If you defined the width, would it, would the, would it word wrap? Yeah, well, yeah, it will. In other words, if we define the width and it was too narrow to fit it in, um, one of the things it might do is word wrap. Uh, it really depends on the particular thing. For example, the word January, even if I made that column one pixel wide, it can't word wrap January because January has no breaks in it. So it would make that bigger. But yeah, in essence, if you, if you assign widths to it, the browser does the best what it can. But the browser also won't cut off content in a table cell. It, it will make sure that the table cell is, is displayed. Um, Again, uh, I haven't seen a case of it doing that. That's not to say that uh, it's totally uh, impossible. 
All right. One thing to note, do not make something a th tag just because you want it centered and bold. All right. Uh, people are chuckling about that, and I'm glad people are chuckling about that. But again, web development around 1999, that's what you did. All right. The reason you don't do that is, is again, we want our HTML code to be semantic. What does the word semantic mean? The word semantic means uh, dealing with the meaning. All right. So we use the tags that represent what our content means, not how we want it to look. So use a th tag if you want, or, or I'm sorry, if that piece of content really is a header in that table. All right. Use a td tag if it's data. Now, if you want data to look centered and bold, well, through CSS, you change it so that TD tags are centered and bold. All right? Again, so, and this goes for everything. You don't use an H1 tag just to make the content bigger. You use the H1 tag if it's a top level heading. And so on and so on and so on down the line. All right, questions about any of these tags? Now, again, back in the old days, people went crazy with this. People would take and make one cell contain itself another nested table. You know, so you'd have a table inside a table. One of the cells would be a table. All right? And that's the kind of thing that just drives you crazy and makes it very difficult to maintain and makes you really locked down to that particular format. Uh, Formatting the layout through CSS gives you so much more flexibility uh, than that. Let's spend a little bit of time styling this. And I'm going to put the style code right in the HTML document, all right, just, just for convenience sake. Again, you know, typically, um, with rare exceptions, it's best to, to use an external CSS file. So I'm going to go in, and I'll put my style tag in here. There was a question last time, and let me answer it once and for all definitively. The question was, could I put a class or an ID on a table? Absolutely. Um, most of my examples I gave, I was putting IDs and classes on divs. But you can put a class or an ID on any HTML tag whatsoever. All right, so don't think that, gee, that's only a div thing. Any HTML tag you can put an ID on to say, hey, I want to point to this specific item on my page. Remember, an ID needs to be unique. That is, there should only be one thing on a page that has a given ID. But if I want to point to it for any reason, um, CSS would be one of the main reasons that you'd want to do that. Uh, later on, when we talk about JavaScript, that will be another reason that we want to have an ID. Uh, both those things... For both those reasons, we put IDs on things because that allows us to point to something on the page to do something for uh, with it. All right. Likewise with a class. Uh, the difference between a class is a class is not unique. You can have several things that have the same class. All right. Um, which, if you think about it, makes sense. You know, an ID should only identify one thing. Uh, a class of things, you know, implies that there's multiple things that have that class that, that, that share some characteristic. All right. So let's start out by controlling the width of the table. And I'm going to put an ID on this table of temp table. All right. Now, one thing that I may have mentioned before, if I haven't, now is as good a time as any, is when you give classes and IDs, you shouldn't talk about how you want it to look in the name of the ID or the name of the class. You should describe what it is, what it means. For example, I'm going to make this table yellow, all right, at some point. I would not call it yellow table, all right, because what happens if I decide to change it to a blue table? Well, now I have a table that has CSS, or that has an ID of yellow, or yellow table, and yet it appears blue on the page. Yeah, that won't be confusing when you go back and, and, and try to edit it later on, right? 
But if you if you uh, uh, give names that represent G, what does that table contain? What does that mean? Then you never have to worry about that. Yeah, this is my temperature table. Yep, it is today. It will be that way tomorrow. It will be the week after that. I may change the way it looks. I may make it bigger or smaller or a different color, but it will always be my temperature table. So let me go in and I gave an ID here. So I assign the style by saying temp table and I'm going to do a width of the first pass I'm going to do 600 pixels and I'll do a background of yellow. And there we go. All right. It's yellow and has a width of 600 pixels. If I resize it, it stays at 600 pixels. Let's go in and change that to a percentage. Because this is probably a little more interesting. I make it a percentage and notice that as I make the page bigger or smaller, it makes it bigger or smaller. Again, 80% of what? Since this table is part of the body, it's not nested within another element, it's 80% of the whole width of the screen. If this was in a div, for example, that had a width, then it would be 80% of that. So for example, if I have a div If I put this in a div that's 800 pixels wide, guess what? It no longer changes its size. Why not? Because it's not 80% of the whole body, it's 80% of the div that contains it. And the div that contains it is 800 pixels, therefore this is going to have 80% of that or 640 pixels. Now, if I make this 80%, then the div will take up 80% of, of the page, of the whole width, and the table will take up 80% within that. So let's give a background color to make this to make this uh, a little more uh, possibly make it a little easier to visualize. All right, the div, which is a gray area, takes up eighty percent. All right. The table takes up 80% of that. As I now move in, notice the div takes up less place of space, and likewise the um, table takes up less. Now notice what happens at a certain point. At a certain point, notice it can't fit the full. It, it can't obey those constraints and fit the full word Los Angeles in there. So what does it do? At that point, it, it wraps it around and it makes a little bit wider column. Now at a certain point, it can't make that table any smaller because it can't break up, in this case, the word Cleveland or the month name of January, right? So therefore, it keeps it at that size. Something has to give and what gives is the constraint that the table be 80% of its container because it can't make it any smaller than it is now and it'll be stuck as that. The browser's smart. The browser does a lot of things on its own that are actually very good. All right. That's one reason I urge people um, not to try to necessarily micromanage their CSS. In other words, um, I, I, when people first learn this, sometimes they just go hog wild and try to put a position and a size and this on everything. Well, 
things can be a lot easier if you just let the browser work its magic for some of the things. All right. So generally when I create CSS, the things that are important to me, like the big blocks of the page, I take some care to position them the way I want to. And then if anything else is important, I'll make sure that's right. But everything else, I just kind of see how the browser places them and decide if I like it or not. All right. Okay. So, let's go in and let's start playing with this a little bit more. What if, for example, I were to make a give a width to the certain columns? All right. What does that mean, temp table TD? It means any TDs that are within the thing that has an ID of temp table. Let's look at the column size now. The column size now is roughly based on the, the width of the column. All right? In other words, all of these columns, when this is at 80%, all of these columns have a little bit of extra space on them, right? There's extra space as part of the name. There's extra space for the January temperature, February temperature, and March temperature. Yet, the size of those columns isn't the same, all right? So the browser more or less sizes those proportionately. It knows how much space it has to play with. It knows how wide each of the columns are. And it gives each column its proportional width. All right. So in other words, the city column, because it has the biggest amount of content in it, is still the widest column, even though there's plenty of space in each. All right. Now, if I go in and define the width of a column then, that will override that. So I can give the, the column a width of 25%. All right. And that will make the four columns of uniform size. And it will keep them that way. Repeat the question. Great question. What's the 25% of? Whenever we, we give a size as a percentage, what is it, what does the percentage relate to? Of the um, table. Well, not of the column, but of the table. All right, we made the TD 25%. That means that each column is 25% of what? It's 25% of what it's contained within. And in this case, it's contained within the table. So if the table is 800 pixels wide, each column will be 200 pixels wide, and so on down the line. So it'll do that until there's an issue with fitting everything in, and then it makes its accommodations. Yes? So what happens if the thing doesn't divide out? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll try that in, in a second. I, I do want to demonstrate this first. So notice again that here there's plenty of width for everything, so everything is even. As I go and resize this, at a certain point, my even distribution breaks down. And notice that city and January are wider than February and March. So the browser does the best it can with the, re with the restrictions you give it, all right? It, it, it tries to make it work, but if it ab absolutely is not possible to make it work, it makes some accommodations. Now, to your question, what if I don't do that right? What if I give a width of each of these of 50% instead of 25%? What do you suppose is going to happen? Yeah, it's going to break down. It, it can't do this. It can't give four columns each each uh, 50 percent. Therefore, it'll kind of throw that restriction out the window and do what it can. All right. It probably will try to make them all even, but it obviously won't. All four of them obviously won't have a width of 
um, 50%. It tried, yeah. Interesting, I would have expected. Yes, those are TDs, not THs. Good point. I, I forgot I made that a TH. Let's make this a TD. Let's make all these TDs. Yeah, you're right, you're absolutely right. Now we'll make all these. Yeah, there we go. Well, actually what it did is it gave the first two that percentage. The other two is like, oops, out of space. We'll throw the, <laughs> you know. It's like, it, it does like I, like I do when I'm writing on this, you know. I'll start writing the tags really big on here, you know. Stupid thing. This is, this is going to be a long way to wait for a small payoff, right. I start making the links really big here, and then as I go down here, I'm squeezing to get it in. <laughs> All right. So the browser does the same thing. All right. Now, let's try adding some borders on here. Pardon me? Oh. Look, my God, there's a spider here. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> it ain't done nothing to me. Not really. It, it, it's kind of creepy looking now. Oh, I'm not going to kill the spider. <laughs> uh, I, I just read something about seeing a spider isn't a problem. Oh my God, it's on the keyboard now. <laughs> Someone said seeing a, seeing a spider isn't a problem. Seeing a spider then not seeing a spider is the problem. <laughs> okay, where did it go? I'm not going to kill the spider. There it is. It's big because it's on the screen. I, I don't know. You don't know how many times I've gotten, and I don't get calls because my daughter won't like take the effort to walk downstairs. So she'll call me on my cell phone like 1230 at night. Dad, there's a bug in my room. It's like, okay, yeah, you know, the deer, uh, yeah. And, but of course, I will not sleep until it, the issue is addressed. All right. Yeah, now he's hiding. I, gee, I hope I didn't like smash the keyboard on him. Okay, good. You're not even close. You're like 10 feet away. And you know, if you were to calculate like the ratio of mass, you know, like, you know, let, let's say, you know, we'll, we'll be optimistic and say I weigh 200 pounds, all right? <laughs> if you were to do the, yeah, it's not that funny, come on. <laughs> uh, if you were to say I weigh 200 pounds, the ratio of my weight to the spider's weight would have to be like in the neighborhood of a million to one, right? You know, just doing the math on the top of my head. Yet, you know, and, and even my daughter, you know, who would, would probably weigh, who really would probably weigh on the order of 100 pounds, you know, would be maybe half a million to one then. But still, I don't know. I've heard that our brain is programmed to, uh, to <laughs> To avoid, uh, to avoid things of, of that general shape, that that, 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 has, that that pattern has evolved in our brains to do that. Yeah, if you want to take them outside so we can continue with this. <laughs> And, and my daughters also do that. They want to see it to make sure I just didn't say, yeah, I'll go, you know, I'll come up, you know, yeah, I'll kill the spider. All right, good night. <laughs> no, no, let me see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, we can continue. 
I'm going to set the width of this back to 25%, and I'm going to put some borders on here. There's no way to escape, right? And and like, <laughs> I don't even. I can't even answer this. <laughs> um. So I put a border on it. And notice I put a border on the table itself, and that literally only gave me a, a border around the table. So there's no border around the individual cells. All right, now I can go in. Thank you very much. Um, all I did since then uh, was add a border to the table, which literally only puts a border around the table. It doesn't put the border around the individual cells. Now we can probably see a pattern here. If I do a border on the TRs, it'll do just a border around that. And I'll do a slightly different border so it shows up. Interesting. Temp table. TR, border, one pixel, red, solid. Weird. Let's do it on a TD. All right, there we go. Interested why it did not do that on a TR, but now notice one thing. Notice that there's a little gap uh, between that. All right, you can actually make the borders collapse by saying border collapse colon collapse, and what that will do is, pardon me. Probably would have forgiven me for that, but why tempt fate? Or maybe you put it on the table tag. There we go. And that made them collapse. All right. Um, let's see. If we wanted to make the headers look different, we could do something like this. Temp table TH. And maybe we give a font size of 1.2M and a color of blue, let's say. Oh, yeah, that is. It did change it. I just can't see very well. Ah, no space. There we go. By the way, the spider didn't bite you, did it? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering because, you know, like, if next week you come in and you're wearing like a, a costume with like a mask on and and like you know you'd be like up on the ceiling like that, <laughs> you know? I don't I don't want that being on my head, you know. 
yeah, that, that, that might be cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See what you miss when you stay home and it's a nice day? See? <laughs> All right. Now, one thing that's often done, and I'm going to go add some more rows to this table just to, to really get the effect uh, uh, a little more vividly, is one problem that you have, especially if the table's wide. So let's make the table wide. So let's make the width of 100% and the content a width of 100%. One problem that you have, especially if there's a lot of rows in the table, and I'm just going to duplicate these rows just to put something in there. Is that your eye can drift. All right. In other words, if I'm looking at 35, what city is that for? Well, if you're not careful, your eye's liable to drift up or down a little, you know, a row, and you're liable to get the wrong impression. All right. Um, so what's often done is it, what was done in the old days to prevent that when you had all big old computer printouts that had just rows and rows of, of, of numbers on it, is that print of mine what are called green bar paper, where there's alternating green and, and white stripes. So that sort of helped you line it up, all right? Because then you weren't looking at a whole sheet of paper, you were looking at just a small little, little bar. We can do something very similar to that here by making each column an alternating color, all right? Let's think about how we're going to do that. How would we make each column an alternating color? Each, I mean each row, I'm sorry. Add a class to each other row, exactly. So, let's say for example that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I want to make alternate rows, instead of being yellow, being white. So I could go in and say dot alternating row background white. All right. Now what do I have to do? I have to assign that to alternating rows. How do I assign it? Because it's a class, I don't say ID equals, I say class equals. All right. So the class starts with a dot and has the name of the class and then I assign that to things on the page. Now I'm just going to do one to start then I'll go back and do the rest. All right, so now Atlanta is in white where the rest of the table is yellow. I'll then go and for alternating rows I will go and apply that style. Is there a simpler way to do that? Yes. Are there any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> the simpler way to do that, keep in mind that oftentimes your tables are not going to be hard coded. Your tables are going to be uh, pulled from a database, for example. You'll do a query and, in other words, instead of having hard-coded these temperatures in here, I would go and access a database and get, you know, do a SQL statement to get a list of cities and their average temperatures, all right? And then I would write a server-side script, like in PHP or ASP.NET or some server-side scripting platform that would loop through that database results and output a table. When you do that, then generating that alternating row class is real easy to do. All right? Because you're writing you're not writing the web page, you're writing a program that writes the web page and therefore you can put a rule in there saying if the row is even, give it the alternate row class. So with plain old HTML, no. But uh, remember that that oftentimes we're not going to be, you know, writing all of our HTML. We'll write some HTML and then we'll write some server-side code that will interact with a database or some other stuff to output what we need. So there, I think I did everything. 
And there we go. Yes? I noticed <coughs> that our red outlines are overpowering our black border all the way around. Yeah. Is there a way to fix that where it is a black border all the way around? Black table? Instead of having just on the outside. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? No. <laughs> I already did that one today. I know. Yeah. And in fact, and in fact, you are going to tell me that one. Maybe not. No. That's not going to work. Put it after. That's a good thought. But what really happens, again, remember that what gets applied is... Um, yeah, the most specific to the least specific. Yes. Is it the same way like when you did borders like before? Like you put like position like Yes. Right. Right. Well I'm hearing two great alternatives here. The one alternative is I could specify um the border, the red border, only to be on certain parts of the cell. So, for example, I could do a border. I would probably do uh, uh, right. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> all right. Let, all right. Uh, let, let's pursue this because this, this is a great question. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to give a border right and bottom, and we'll see what that gets us. I already, I already see skepticism here, all right? But we can fix it, all right? We'll get this to work. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a copy of this so we can go back to the original if needed. All right, so what I'm going to do is on the TD, I'm going to put, instead of a border, I'm going to do a border, what did I say, right? And a border top. Now, the naysayers in the audience, what is wrong with this? I don't think so. All right, you guys are close, but solve some of the problem, right? In other words, some folks said that these cells wouldn't have a border. Well, guess what? The right border for this cell is the same thing as the left border for that cell, right? So yeah, this doesn't have a left border, but this one had a right border and all the way down the line. Now, what did this not solve? The bottom? and the far right. All right. How could we fix this? How could we fix this? I thought maybe we made the all around borders the bigger Okay, we'll we'll try that in a second. All right. But how could we fix this taking this strategy? Pardon me? Right. Well, if we did that, then we'd be back to our original problem, where the, where the black border would, would be underneath the red border. What I could do is, obviously, this is most of the way right, all right? Uh, the problems are this one, this one, and this one. Well, guess what? I can make three classes. A class for the bottom row, a class for the left, no, rightmost row, and a class for the top row. I'll just do one of these, all right, in the interest of time. So let's go in and I will make a, let's 
left column, actually, not left row. And the left column, what do I want to do? I don't want the red border on the right. No. Because it gets the it gets the border from it gets the left border from the right border of the one next to it. All right. Yes. I believe you can. Oops. I didn't add any classes to it or didn't add any things to the class. So let's go in and make this class. And there we go. We got rid of that one. We could do the same thing for all of them in that column. Do a slightly different rule for the one on the bottom, a slightly different rule for the one on the top. And yeah, I believe you can do classes, uh, multiple classes. Let's test that just by putting in a dummy class. We'll put a dummy class on that. That will say... Color purple. 